الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد هبت في الله a question was asked السلام عليكم I had a question regarding something that I shared from a Facebook da'wah page that had a beneficial statement from one of the salaf a brother commented on my shared post saying that I should not share from that page because they support Yasser Qadi and other deviant scholars I personally have not noticed this, but nonetheless, I responded by saying that the post I shared had nothing to do with Yasser Qadi. Please advise on some takeaway principles regarding the subject. Does sharing something from a page necessitate that I endorse all of their views, or this is this a made-up principle? How should we approach such matters? First and foremost, Habit Tifillah, as I would say, is be careful of your peers, because many of the people will give advice who've never studied. Many people will make up principles and make up uh, rulings and they haven't studied. Or they are just people of taqlid, blind, blind following. Or they are people of misguidance and hawa. So be careful in general of that. Or they are another category, just people who are ignorant. And so, Ahabat Tafillah, it's, it's very imperative to not, <coughs> excuse me, and not listen and indulge yourself in the statements of people too much. And sticking with what you learn from the ulama. And doing as much talib al-ilm as possible. Those are the ways to find safety. Those are the ways to preserve your religion. That is the sabil that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam uh, mentions which is the sabil mu'minin and the times of fitna and when people are speaking without knowledge and people are attacking you based on this and based on that what do you need to do qala nabiyuna sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati wa sunnat al-khulafa ar-rashidin al-mahdiin the prophet alayhi salatu was salam said it's upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided Khulafa Rashidin al Mahdin. And then he said, cling to it with your molar teeth. So we see that the Prophet والسلام, said, clinging to the Sunnah, his Sunnah, and the Sunnah of the uh, Khulafa Rashidin al Mahdin, the rightly guided Khalifa, meaning Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, wa Ali, radiallahu ta'ala, and Majma'een. So this is your, your asl. This is where you are, your masdar in the religion. You're going back to the book of Allah and you're and back to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa for guidance. And the sabila mu'mineen, the minhaj of the salaf al-salih. And that will bring about safety and rectification and protection in your religion. As far as this, uh, and, and uh, another point is the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that when you see these differences, when you see a lot of ikhtilaf, you see so much fitna between the Muslims, you see them differing, and you see differences between Ahl Sunnah and fitna between this one and this one, this scholar said this one, this scholar said this, uh, the Tulab are saying this, and there's armies of people making tibdi of, uh, <laughs> of another group. <coughs> All of this fitna. Nabiyyina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said وَمَنْ يَعِيشْ مِنْكُمْ بَعْدِي فَسَيَّرَ اَخْتِلَافٍ كَثِيرًا فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي وَسُنَّتِ الْخُلَافَ رَاشِدِينَ الْمَحْدِينَ He said, whoever lives after me فَسَيَّرَ اَخْتِلَافٍ كَثِيرًا We'll see many differences Many different فَسَيَّرَ اَخْتِلَافٍ كَثِيرًا They will see many, many differences then he sallallahu alayhi wa said, فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي So it's upon you my sunnah. So this is what you have to bring back. When people are bringing up new ideas and new ideologies and new qawaid and principles and asul and claiming this and attacking you on this, then ask them, is what they're saying in accordance with the sunnah? Is it in accordance with the madhab of the salaf? Do you, مَنْ سَبَقَ بِهَذَا قَوْلِ Who preceded you in this statement? So that's very important to keep that as a uh, uh, a way a qaida minhajiyah, a a minhaj based principle, okay, on a way how to operate, how to deal with things in general. Now, 
specifically about what you said. Plain and simple. Of course, every web page, every website, every something that you may send out may not represent your views. And what's even more important for us to look at, we love our ulama, but we don't endorse every single view that every one of our scholars endorses. So one of your ulama, min ulama sunnah, ma'ruf bi sunnah, maybe he has a mistake in the issue. Or maybe you just don't agree with his mokif, his position on a particular individual or a particular mas'ala even, a particular issue, an issue of ijtihad. So because you say you love the sheikh and you take knowledge from the sheikh doesn't mean you endorse every issue, every goal that comes out of his mouth. So people have to understand that. That's very important. Another example. If you look at uh, many websites, there's many websites that have a lot of beneficial durus when you especially probably in the, in the English language as well, but I, I'm more familiar with the Arabic uh, websites. <coughs> and some websites have a lot of beneficial durus and durus from different people, some people I've never heard. Sometimes you'll find Imam Muqba who was known as a sword of the sunnah and a mountain of the sunnah in this time, a muhaddith who chopped and attacked and sliced and caused fear in Ahl Bid'ah and their Qawa'id and their Usul. But yet you'll see on the same website many Mubtadiyah, mubtadiya, many people of innovation and desires because the people have just brought a bit of this and have brought a bit of this. So because I go to that website and I benefit from Sheikh Muqbil or what have you, doesn't mean I endorse all of those Mubtadiyah that are on there you might find some of the most extreme of Mubtadiyah. Usually not quite that extreme. They're not going to be worshipping graves or something like this, but you'll find, you'll find a hodgepodge, a mix of many things on many, many websites. So of course you're not responsible. But I would say at the same time, be careful because people are always willing and ready and waiting to criticize you. So be careful. There are many, there are some websites that I find are immensely beneficial, but I won't share them. I won't mention them because of the fitna associated with them. Because then people will say, you endorse so-and-so. No, I don't. But what is on that website, I have not seen a mistake. And it only calls to the book of Allah. And it only calls to the sunnah of the messenger of Allah. And it only gives you athar of the salaf. But I don't agree with the one who's put the, the, put the website together. And many of my ulama have made tabdi of him. So for that reason, I don't endorse it. So that is a, a safer way, I guess. And a more political <coughs> way of dealing with uh, some of the fitna and some of the madness. So it's very important to be cautious about what you spread. But again, going back, there's no one's views you're going to endorse. Another example, a last example. There are some the lab that I've spoken, that I have praised, and I still praise them and believe they have not, have immense khair. But I see that they also sit with people who la shak are from the mubtadiya, that they have some thing. But at the same time, I have husnavan. I have good, positive outlook towards them in that they see a maslaha. They see a benefit which outweighs the harm and for maybe doing a, a, a little bit of dawah with this individual. Not going around and, you know, like this. But sometimes you see people from Ahl Sunnah that either they've made a mistake and you see them sitting with a mubtadiya, giving a, a lecture. But it's a rare thing. It's not like they're always with them. Or some may even have joined certain organizations. So if I had the opportunity, I would sit and ask that individual. But I'm not going to go out and just make videos on them and attack them and, and, and say, Khalas, they're sitting with Ahl Bida. He's, <coughs> he's a Mubtadiyah and he endorses their views. Not. Because I know them and I know their usul, so I have Husnul for them. So that's very important to have Husnul 
And anyhow, protect yourself. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.